If you could live green, would you? I'm Nick Fedorov, host of Things Green, where we introduce nuggets of green lifestyle from gardening, upcycling, answering your questions, sustainability, even discussing environmental issues. You can become more confident in making the right decisions for you and your family. So come along as we are Things Green. Green is brought to you in part by Being out in the yard and garden has never been so much fun. With our many playful laser cut pet, garden, and yard signs. More information at instylesteel.com. For nearly 90 years, the Bonide family has provided solutions to lawn and garden pest problems. Whether it's an insecticide, weed killer, fungicide, or plant care product, Bonide products will provide you the best solution to your lawn, garden, or home pest problem. Southland Sod Farms, creators of genuine marathon sod. Pre-grown, tall fescue grass. More information at sod.com. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. There we go. Get a little water on these things. And when your plants stay hydrated, it's a really good thing, especially in all the heat that we've been experiencing. That's a really, really important thing here. Okay, I don't know if you know this or not, because uh, you know I like bragging about myself, and because that, that's what dudes kind of do sometimes. Uh, I was a landscape contractor a long time ago. Our firm was a landscape contracting firm, I should say, and I had a series of banks that I used to do landscaping for. We did installation work, we did uh, everything from the irrigation to do, uh, the plants and you, you name it. It was all about doing the irrigation, uh, all about keeping the places looking the best that they pop possibly could. Sometimes we did indoor plants some and we'd always did the outdoor plants. But it was really pretty interesting because uh, I did a brand new landscape. It was in San Pedro at a bank and the lady calls me up, the branch, branch manager, and she says, hey, we got a problem over here. Your plants are dying and it's your fault. All right, well, let me come down there. Now, that was way before that anybody gave guarantees on plants. So I go cruising on over there and I see this area that we landscaped. There was a berm and there was a bench, there was trees, grass and gazania all around. And we're sitting there and we're talking and this gal was just on me. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, you've got a gopher problem. That's what you have. This is the reason. And she was adamant. I lived in this area my whole life. There was never a gopher problem. And it was the absolute funniest thing because what happened was that there's this piece of gazania as we're talking and it started going back and forth like this. And then all of a sudden bloop, it went right into the ground. It, it disappeared before her eyes. She was like, Oh my goodness, I didn't realize that there were gophers over here. Do something about it. So we started doing gopher control. Now, back in those days, we would use different materials and traps and stuff to uh, capture and to get rid of the gophers. And I gotta tell you, it's kind of a gruesome thing when you really think about it, the whole idea of of working with gophers and trying to do things with them and trying to get rid of them because right away everybody wants to say we want to kill them we want to kill them but that's not necessarily the best thing to do we have natural and more organic and uh, like ways to approach something like this and I have to tell you 
they're a whole lot better and it's not as gruesome. So that's what we're going to be talking about here right now. But before we get all excited over here, we have to remember uh, about how a gopher actually works. There's a couple different ways. So let's go over here and kind of take a look at what their habitat is. And their habitat is really kind of interesting. So what we did over here is that we created this little schematic, if you may, and it's pretty indicative of, of what goes on in a gopher run. First off, gophers will, will make runs up to 600 feet easily. And then they make their gopher runs laterally like this, anywhere from say, oh, six to eight inches below to down to 15 inches below. So they'll just go nice and straight, just like this over here. And then what they do is that they'll take and they'll pop out of the ground and it's always at an angle. And they'll do this several different ways in seven different areas. And it comes out of the ground. But what fascinates me, I mean, absolutely fascinates me about this whole thing is they also will do a run that goes down sideways like this. Now, if you notice, it's opposite of the actual run and they'll live in there. They'll actually sleep and live in a place like this. Then not far away, they create their own little sewage system. How cool is that? These guys are smart. Now, gophers for the most part are loners. They are going to be all by themselves until they mate. And then they'll have maybe three to up to nine of the babies. And then most of them will end up uh, banishing, but the, you'll have the little ones too. And when the little ones are ready to go out on their own, that's what they'll do. They'll go out on their own. So you'll have two to three of them that'll hang around. And then you have the, uh, then you have the adult. Now this right here is showing us is what a gopher hole kind of looks like. There's a, we're not going to be talking about moles here. We're only talking about gophers. So let's not get too excited. Okay. A gopher mound is typically one that is higher on one side and it's lower on the back side. So think of it. It's like a, like a crest coming up like this. So it's a crest that comes up like this and they'll put it into planter beds. They'll put them into, they'll put them into, to your lawn and they will make a mess and they're eating roots. That's their main, main diet. Uh, they'll kind of chow down on the occasional grub and all that, a grub, which is uh, insect, but they primarily will look around and they'll look for the roots. They, they, they don't like decaying matter a whole lot, but they'll eat it. And then what they'll do is that they, uh, they usually leave their hole uh, closed up. Well, when we end up trapping them, I don't want to talk about that because that's not what we're going to do. We're going to ward them off. That's what we're going to do. And what we're going to do by warding them off. Oh, and by the way, uh, when, when the lady called me up, we didn't have the technology I'm going to share with you. We did, we couldn't do any trapping. That's now that I remember that I should have really gone over the story better. We couldn't trap them because adjacent to where we did this landscape was a veterinarian. And the vet, it was a pet hospital, and the people would come and bring their animals and dogs and they'd let them do their business in that area. So we couldn't do any kind of trapping. So what we did is that we did is that we would get poultry wire, also known as chicken wire. And there's two different sizes of this. You can have real big holes like this. I mean, small holes, or you could have them where they're about twice as big as this. And you put it on the ground and then, in fact, let's just get rid of that. Boom. Okay. You just uh, lay it on the ground and then you would take and put either landscape fabric on top of it, or just like that, you would cover it up. Uh, if you had grass, you would do the same thing. You just cover that up and the gophers wouldn't go through it. But there's a little bit of a problem when you start using stuff like that. It's going to rot out. Yeah, think about that for a second. It's going to rot out. So if you're not donning yourself a pair of gloves and you end up getting through some old wire like that, you can get yourself some tetanus. If you've ever gotten a tetanus shot, oh my goodness, it's absolutely horrible. So today's technology is just mind boggling. 
we have now this material which is made out of stainless steel think about that for a second it's stainless steel now this this one actually comes in really big sheets like this and what i like about it is that you only need a, you need a pair of i got my gloves on so it's hard to cut uh you only need a pair of scissors now look at this look what's gonna happen it cuts it cuts so easy no fancy no fancy nothing let's cut this again look at this look at this oh, just cuts so you can contour it around wherever you have to contour it you put it down on the ground well, let's cut it off over right here you're going to you're going to put it around wherever you have the, the you know the situation going on and then you can put your layer of grass right on top of that and because this is stainless steel and it's so tight knit like this you're still going to be able to have water fertilizer things like that go back and forth but you'll also be able to uh, keep it so that the gophers they can't go through and being that it's stainless steel it's not going to rust okay so how do we you know what, what do we do when we're talking about our plants so we take our plants and you wrap them up no we're not going to do that because the people who come up with this stuff oh, excuse me there for a second they came up with these with these bags look at these bags these are bags that you could put the plants in and then you could plant the plants isn't that amazing so this would be like for a one gallon size container i'm looking around to see whether i have one or not but if you wanted to put a smaller plant in here and, and go like that i guess you could do that but they also make these bags that are much smaller and you can use like maybe you have like a, a little four inch size container or maybe a, a pot pack or something like that the little smaller ones but uh, this is what i would do here we have one that's a little bit bigger than a four inch and it's cylindrical it's long it's really cool this is a bag so we know that it's going to go inside just like this but we take it out of the container first. I don't want you to go thinking that you put it in the container and it's gonna give it extra protection. If you end up doing this, then the plant will probably get all rebound and die on you. So we have our plant. This right here is rosemary. Rosemary is a very interesting plant because not only does it taste good, as good for cooking, uh, it actually turns into a plant. We treat it like an herb, but some of these rosemary, if it's the rosemary officinalis, the regular one, hey, we're, we're talking plants that are going to get just huge like this. And they get really woody and very, ah, this, you don't want them to get like that if you use them for culinary purposes. Uh, they do attract bees. They get a little flower on there. So you got to be careful about that. Keep them pruned down. But if you're constantly pruning these things, you can keep them a little bit smaller and still treat them like that. There is a dwarf variety of this, by the way, not as aggressive growing, uh, growing, but it'll still give you all the flavor of a rosemary and what it can do so the first thing we're going to do over here is that we're going, going to dig our hole we always want to pre-dig the holes whenever we're planting now when we do plant we have to make certain that we do not uh, bury any plant deeper than the container that it comes out of you can't do that you want it to take and get this off for a second we want to take and we want to make sure that we're not burying it any deeper all right so let's follow all the practices that we know as it pertains to planting so you have a plant that's just like this you can kind of squish the sides i have not pulled this out of the container so i don't know i don't know i don't know if this plant is well if this well plant is well rooted or what it is but we're going to take our fingers and we're going to cradle the plant like this and then we turn it upside down and then we just tap and then once we tap we're going to pull it out oh look at this look how pretty this is we've got roots that are coming this is a nicely rooted plant now i'm holding it like this and you could tell that this right here is a little bit it, it's kind of falling apart a little bit so it's much more rooted at the bottom which quite frankly i'd rather have than at the top right here so that's very very good now if we didn't have a gopher problem or we, or we won't uh, then we could just take and plant this away plant away but we've got a gopher problem so we're going to take the bag and we're going to put this in the bag and by putting it in the bag we want to try to get it down as far as possible 
just like this. Look at that. Just like we're going shopping. Do, 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 do. Okay, now what we do, okay, the color, the color is all coming together. The plant, the soil is coming right up next to the bag. Not going to be a big airspace kind of, kind of deal. We're going to take this and we're going to put this in the hole. Now remember, we don't want to bury it any deeper. This, this hole is just a little too deep. So come back and put some more soil, pack it down. We want the width of the container just a little bit wider. So make sure that you kind of have that in check too. So this right here is going to be, oh, look at it, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now it's the back filling time. So we have, we have back filling that's going to go here. Now what I like to do is I like to back fill a little bit and then press down. Press down. Okay. Then we can go and backfill a little more, press down. If your soil was a little moister than this, that would be okay too. All right, so look at what we are doing here. Now, you're gonna see what I'm gonna do something which is really pretty interesting. So this right here is hands down a perfect, absolutely perfect way to plant this. Look, we have our ladybugs here that are going to keep it going and nice and green. And keep all the bad bugs away, I should say. Actually, this right here uh, is, is also a plant that can ward off a menagerie of insects as well because of the pungency that it has. Is that a word? Uh, because it's pungent, uh, it has a smell. Many ex insects will not come around it. So it's a really good plant to, to, to have. So look at, we're, le we're level with our, our, our soil over here and we're above the ground level a little bit. This is also important because this right here is necessary for uh, the fact that if the gopher decides to come above ground, which by the way, they usually come around at nighttime. It's, they're, they are a nocturnal kind of critter. Uh, and if you have it above like this, they're not going to cross it. So what you want to do is you want to wait right there. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Yes. Okay. Are you still with me over here? Because the most important thing <laughs> that we need to do, I should have brought that with me earlier, is that we have to water this thing. We want to keep our soil moist. We don't want to keep it wet. What does that mean? We want to make sure that the soil itself is that like a sponge. You know, when you take a sponge and you dunk it in water and you wring it out, that's what we call a moist sponge. You don't have water dripping off of it or anything like that. So what we'll do is that we will take and we will water this, make sure that it gets enough water and that it's soaking in. Now, if you want, you can also take, we'll move our ladybugs out. You can also build a little basin around each plant after you plant them and that'll help hold in the water too. Just like that. And this ladies and gentlemen is what we would consider, oh and kids, this is what we would consider a natural and or organic way of controlling them. Now mind you, this is not an organic material but it's not going to rot out on you. It has sustainability factors. Uh, so therefore it's much safer to work with. We have little tiny holes. It's pliable. You're able to take and you're able to cut it with a pair of scissors and they are reusable. So this right here is literally the cat's meow in natural and organic go for control. Pretty much just that simple. So this is where it all happens, huh? Yeah. Okay, and I see we've got ourselves a bit of a pumpkin patch going on over here. Is this something that you planted? I did not plant this pumpkin not. patch. So what is it, like kids come in here and plant this kind of stuff, uh, the teachers or what? Yeah, the, the teachers would come and they have some plants or, and they could grow, they grow them with the students and they teach the students about the plants and all that. Now it looks like we have ourselves a Nice little hefty pumpkin, pumpkin garden going on here, huh? Yeah, a little Look bit. Got another one. 
growing right over here. <laughs> yeah, I like that. We got some on the way. Now, this is actually kind of fun when it comes to pumpkins. The bigger the seed, the bigger the pumpkin's gonna be. So technically, if you were to grow this pumpkin this big, and then get the biggest of the seeds, and then grow that one a little bit bigger, your seed will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and you keep on harvesting the largest of seeds. You can get a seed that's this big, and they'll charge, it's an award-winning pumpkin, they'll charge upwards of $100 wow. from because they'll grow pumpkins that are thousands of pounds. But the reason why we're here is because I had asked our social media friends whether or not they knew of any kind of plants that had powdery mildew. Okay, have you ever seen this before? Uh, around somewhere, might have. Okay, so this is powdery mildew, and I don't know if camera dude can get it, but you can actually see it flaking off. Can you see that? It's flaking off. It, it, is a, it is a mildew, and this is a mildew, it's a fungus. And as a fungus, what's happening here is that it's covering this leaf blade and it's inhibiting it from talking to the sun to create starches and sugars and to do all the magic that a leaf needs to do to direct its energy into those pumpkins that were growing over here. So that right there is a huge problem. Now what a lot of people will do is that they'll spray a basic copper sulfate on something like this. And although that is something that can be used, you end up having an oily residue that's left behind. So what we'll end up doing here is that we'll need to wash that stuff off. And when you wash it off, uh, it will help open up those pores again. But then again, why do you wanna go through the, the trouble of using something that you have to wash off afterwards? So what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna take something like this. Now this is Protection Plus. It's an insecticide and fungicide. And see all these things that it, that it does over here? It has uh, aphids and mites and powdery mildew. It's right on here. And the best part is, is that we're looking at using something that if you spray this with, and, and it gets on the vegetables, when you eat those vegetables, a body part doesn't fall off because you don't want any kind of nasty chemicals happening to any of your food crops. So what we want to do is that we want to uh, put ourselves on a program. <clears throat> Once we see this stuff, we put ourselves on a program to wipe it out. And the best part is it's going to wipe out other insects that may be around here as well. Now, you can mix this stuff up by putting uh, a little bit inside of a, a, a pump sprayer or even a hose and sprayer, follow the directions as listed on the, on the package over here, and then you could just spray away. Or what you could do is you could use a ready to use. And a ready to use is super handy because it's a pre-mix that you come through here and you'll spray. So why don't you give this a whirl right here and just start, I take this leaf right here and start spraying. So what he's doing here is that he's basically smothering, go ahead, really saturate it, really saturate it. Now, uh, I'm even okay with you taking and spraying underneath the leaf and kind of going all the way down and through the branch. So, so we have some, it's all on the branches too. Oh, wow. So spray it all the way down. Now, if you've got a super chronic problem like we're starting to have over here, probably a hose end sprayer would work really well because what you're gonna to wanna to do is not only saturate the leaf of the plant, you can hit the flowers, you can hit the actual pumpkins, and equally as important, you can hit the soil and you can drench the soil a little bit. And this right here will keep things at bay. Uh, there's, uh, in fact, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna show you some pictures of some chronic uh, white fly. White fly, I like to call flying dandruff where you hit the plant and you see all these, these little white little gizmos flying all over the place and they go back to the plant. The, this particular white fly is the giant white fly and it leaves a webbing material behind. It's very difficult to cut through all of that, but you'll find out that with the white fly, this is 100% kill on the white fly. You wanna pay attention to the upper part of the leaves, uh, the lower part of the leaves, underneath the leaves, because that's where they lay the eggs. And you also want to, you want to come back and do little follow-ups here and there. So it's really good to know that we can use something that isn't toxic, 
that isn't going to uh, that isn't going to wipe the plant out and it isn't going to hurt any potential uh, fruit or flowers or anything like that so but that young man I think you've got yourself a job to do so uh, there's more than one leaf here that needs spraying there's a couple here yeah all right have at it If the earth didn't have atmosphere, we'd all fall off and we wouldn't have greenhouse gases. According to the EPA, 82% of greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide or CO2 due to planes, trains, and automobiles spewing out all kinds of nasty stuff. 10% of greenhouse gases is from methane. Here, pull my finger. And the balance from stuff I can't even pronounce. Nature provides a way to convert or clean those greenhouse gases into oxygen. Trees, for instance, they do a decent job, but there's something that works a whole lot better. But you have to look under your nose and it tickles your toes. It's grass. In fact, only 2,500 square feet of grass, which is about the size of a half of a basketball court, converts enough oxygen from its leaf density and fast growth for a family of four. Kind of gives a new meaning to watching the grass grow, doesn't it? Grass, it's good for you, your family, and the environment. Thanks for joining me on another excursion of Things Green. Our goal is to educate, inform, and entertain so you can become exposed to a green lifestyle inside and outside of the home and community, all on your terms. Join me next time right here as we help you with things green. John Delmatoff Backhoe Service has been serving Southern California for over 22 years and is a proud supporter of Things Green. Being out in the yard and garden has never been so much fun. With our many playful laser cut pet, garden, and yard signs. More information at instylesteel.com. For nearly 90 years, the Bonide family has provided solutions to lawn and garden pest problems. Whether it's an insecticide, weed killer, fungicide, or plant care product, Bonide products will provide you the best solution to your lawn, garden, or home pest problem. Southland Sod Farms, creators of genuine marathon sod. Pre-grown, tall fescue grass. More information at sod.com. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. live green would you i'm nick federoff host of things green where we introduce nuggets of green lifestyle from gardening upcycling answering your questions sustainability even discussing environmental issues you can become more confident in making the right decisions for you and your family so come along as we are things green
out in the yard and garden has never been so much fun. With our many playful laser cut pet, garden, and yard signs, more information at instylesteel.com. For nearly 90 years, the Bonide family has provided solutions to lawn and garden pest problems. Whether it's an insecticide, weed killer, fungicide, or plant care product, Bonide products will provide you the best solution to your lawn, garden, or home pest problem. Southland Sod Farms, creators of genuine marathon sod. Pre-grown, tall fescue grass. More information at sod.com. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. And that's the way you keep your plants moist. Hi, I'm inviting you to come down to one of the free home shows where I give free garden talks. All you have to do is go to my website, thingsgreen.com, to see when the dates and the venues are at. Today here at the thingsgreen.com Botanical Gardens, we're going to be talking about the science of soil. It's so exciting to see how it works and how we're going to be able to save water while understanding how it works. And today we have horticulturalist, agronomist, and just all around funny person, Amy Brick. How you doing, Amy? Good, thanks for having me. Well, indeed, I appreciate you, uh, you know, following me in the streets and, uh, you know, wielding the knife at right. work. Right, stalking, to... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're a comedian. I am, yeah, yeah. stand-up comedian. So the, the uh, agronomy thing and the horticulture thing and all that, you have no idea what's going on, do you? Mm, no, no, I have no, I mean, like, I know those words, because yeah. <laughs> that's it, yeah, I have no idea. What kind of, uh, what kind of comedy do you do? So I do, like, relatable, like, stuff that happens to real people, okay. you know, uh, a lot of stuff about my kids, which they don't like, but now that they realize that it makes a little bit of money, they're okay yeah. with it now, because they can be bought. Nice, nice. You yeah. Know, all these years I've been making fun of my grand and my kids and grandkids, and I could be making money at Yes, it. absolutely. Oh, man, we gotta that's hang out more often. Right, yeah. <laughs> I can learn how to garden, you can learn comedy. You probably know a lot more comedy and, and, than you realize. And before we go any further, do you have like a website or a YouTube channel or something like that? I do. Oh, okay. Thanks for asking. Cheap and shameless plug. Thank you. It's uh, emmybrickcomedy.com. Oh, this is simple. Okay, yeah. here's, here's something. In this world of political correctness, is a comedian or comedian? It's whatever you want it to be. Is that what it is? It's whatever you want. Okay, so it doesn't matter. I, I just say comedian. Be... I just say stand up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very good. Well, I appreciate you standing up right here today. I understand you have a gift for me. Did you? What'd you do with it? Oh, I put it right here. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah. So I'm also a realtor. All right. That's my real job. So I'm a real estate broker. I right. work in Southern California. Nice. And uh, so I had a little swag bag for you. Mm, so uh, I like gifts. You know, as the mask mandate may be coming back, I wanted uh -huh. everyone to know that you know me. Wow, look at that. Okay, one, two, three, four. Nice, nice, nice. And then uh, you do a lot of gardening, right? I do a lot Sometimes, of gardening. Sometimes, do you hurt yourself? All the time I hurt myself. Okay, well, here's some band-aids. Band to do that. All right, good. And now, this isn't because, you know, this is just anyone could use this, but I kind of work with a lot of older people, so they need a place to put their medicines. Oh, thank you, Amy. So, so it means kind of yes. neat. It's got... Yes. Yeah, I'll, take right? my, I'll take my pill box. Put all your pills, pills in there. And Actually, you know what I do when I travel? I put quarters in here. Cause I don't for like, the bed? I don't keep, I don't keep, <laughs> no, parking and stuff like oh, that. Okay. Yeah, 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 I need to do it because I don't like to keep change in my pockets. Okay. Yeah, so we could do that. Why, thank you, I Absolutely. appreciate that. And then when I end up uh, getting more gray hairs, I'll be able to put real medication in there. Exactly, so we'll have this for you. Okay, let's, let's take this and put this out of the okay, way over cool. here. Because you're going to end up taking it home and giving it to somebody else and I want that to happen. <laughs> okay, in the world of soils uh, and the science of soils, we're going to do some demonstration today, but I thought it would be kind of kind of fun to un understand and to, uh, did you know that there are different types of soil bags that you can buy? There's soils, there's compost, there's planting mixes, there's mulches. I didn't know that. All of these things have different pronunciations, they're different words, they have different meanings. So like for instance, we have something here that's called planting mix and high quality mulch. Okay. But it's in a, it's in a half cubic bag. So this half cubic bag is so cute because it's so small. It's just for babies. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can get quart size bags and all that. But this right here makes a lot of sense because they're light for most people mm -hmm. to do. 
So, so I think that's really kind of a cool thing. And I'm going to put this one down in the ground over here because we're going to circle back to it possibly. This right here I think is also kind of neat is because here we have a, a two-in-one planting mix and mulch. Hmm. So the name kind of almost reflects what we had over here, but it's got other attributes to it. One of the nice things is that they're starting to put pictures on here. So if you have flowers and vegetables and blah, 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 you, you could tell just by looking at the picture what it would be good for. That's helpful. Yeah, so we have organic and natural. So I like that. But this is a one and a half cubic foot bag. So if you've been doing your Pilates, then this might be the, this might be the bag that you want to use, a little bit bigger. Now, this bag, this is how, when I started in the world of gardening, you couldn't find a bag that was any smaller than this. This is a two cubic foot bag, much bigger, much heftier. Typically, your landscape contractors and gardeners are buying this because, you know, we just, you, people like you and me, we just don't have the hand strength. So that's what we end up doing, is that we, is that we, it's not really for the casual gardener. <laughs> no. So the reason, the other reason why we're bringing this up over here, and the reason why she wasn't really following me around with a knife. Well, I am or was to, I? Or <laughs> we never did have this in the studio before. <laughs> okay. So what we got going over here is that I want to. Uh, there's two different ways of opening a bag. Oh, okay. And it kind of makes a lot of sense. The first way is if you're going to be only using small portions of it. So if you have just a couple of pots, you're gonna be potting up or you're gonna be, uh, uh, you know, whatever it is that you're gonna be doing with it, you would take and you would cut it from the top right here, take out what you need, then you can roll it up and then put a clip on there or whatever and there you go. You could put a chip clip. You could put a chip clip, but don't get confused. Don't go putting this back into your pantry. <laughs> you're gonna have a little problem right there. But what I think is really neat is that there's a way of opening the bag to when you're gonna just use the whole thing. So let's sacrifice this thing right okay. now. And that is by taking and cutting it on the side of the bag. Okay. And then, so why don't you go ahead and, and try not to lop off my arm there. But just like kinda. Uh-huh. Okay. Would you like that? I do that very daintily, don't you think? Yeah, you did. Okay, so, <laughs> <There you go. laughs> okay. Now what you wanna do is imagine yourself either redoing a lawn or a planter bed and you want to get it all out. So just take and push it over. Push it over okay. to the side. All right, all right, all right. Now, you actually kind of did it right. Just now pick it up at the corners right here and then slice, pull like this. Pull it back. And then you can pull backwards towards you. And it all comes out really nicely. And it all comes out. That's perfect. Where typically when you have it on the other way, it's heavier to use, it's much more cumbersome, and you can end up hurting your yeah, back. That's yeah, it's a great idea. That's yeah. how I watch my husband do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> exactly. Feel like that's it. what we're made for. That's exactly it. That's right. So anyway, so that's the, that's the story behind here. Now, let's go over here, and we're gonna take a look at some soil and the okay, science behind let's it. Let's do okay? it. So the science behind soil is really neat because soils are uh, soils and mulches and compost are they, they, they do different things. So we have compost. Let's first uh, do a little definition over here. Okay. We have compost and we have mulch. Now okay. mulch can be organic or inorganic. What is inorganic? Inorganic is I something. I know it's that, cheaper. When well, you're it does. Fruit. It doesn't. Inorganic means that uh, it is in the world of composting, mm -hmm. in the in, in or what we're talking about. Inorganic would be things like like rock, mm, because okay. it doesn't break down. Right. Well, it doesn't about 30, 30 40 thousand years. Okay. Uh, so you have you have rock. Uh, a lot of people will take. I, I don't like when they do that, but they they take rubber tires, uh, and they'll chop them up in little tiny pieces, and they'll make it look like it's bark and they've been using that. Yeah, exactly, mm. exactly. That makes me feel kind of weird. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bad. Okay, good, it's bad. <laughs> I'm against bad. that. Oh, you know what somebody else is doing? Somebody else is doing, they're taking, uh, uh, they're taking paint and they dry paint, you know the paint that comes in paint cans? Yeah. Well, there's a recycling program. They take that paint and then they chop up, they chop it all up after it dries mm -hmm. and then they'll put it in a tumbler and they paint the paint, and then they're using that as putting as a top layer. So a mulch is used as a top layer. Right. And it could be organic or inorganic. 
I wouldn't use the paint. I definitely wouldn't use the um, tire. Uh, the tire, and but you can use rock. I mean, it has all its. Well, it that makes a lot of sense. I had a friend who replaced mulch at her house, uh -huh. and then her dog ate it and died. Oh, yeah. you're kidding me? No, I'm not. All right, all right. Yeah, why would you kid about that? Like, <laughs> you're a yeah, I'm a really nice person. Like, I don't. I She's like. A mean I love. Comedian. I love dogs. <laughs> right, no, I was heartbroken for her. That is really interesting because. Because there's a cocoa mulch, mm -hmm. which is organic. It actually comes, a cocoa mulch, mulch they say, because chocolate, right? Right. Yeah. So this cocoa, oh. this cocoa mulch Dogs is supposed to be, it's supposed to be um, um, poisonous to, to animals. Yeah. I've never heard of anybody or ha having a dog croak out because of that. Yeah. But the thing of it is, you have to be careful. Right. You never, ever but She know. had no idea. She was heartbroken. Yeah. Oh, she, yeah, definitely. I can see how that goes. So important that you have organic. Yes, it really is. And there's a lot of different degrees of organic and natural and stuff, which we're not going to get into right now. We're not going to. Okay. So uh, we have an issue, a water issue. And this water issue, uh, what we're doing today is that we're going to be talking about mulches. And a compost can be used as a mulch but typically a mulch is not a compost. So a mulch is, is, I mean a compost, is something that you mix in the soil. A compost, a, Wait, did a you say that backwards? I, I no, feel like you did. No, a compost, you mix in the soil. Right. A mulch, you put on top. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about mulches, but we wanna be able to, we wanna be able to understand what's going on, on beneath the soil surface so that we can retain as much moisture as possible. Okay. Okay, so if we were to take and we were to look at soil particles, soil particles are, are made up of different types of materials. It could be sand, silt, and clay. Mm -hmm. All of these sand, silt, and clay have different sizes. They have, and these sizes really make a difference on how much moisture can be retained. So we're going to look at an expanded view of this. Imagine if we put it underneath a microscope, we had, we had this rock, and this rock represents soil particles. There's a lot of air in between there. So if we were to take some water, please, and we were to, you know, let me just pick this up here. Okay. If we were to take this right here, and we were to put the water in here, understanding it's a very rocky, sandy soil, just go ahead and dump that in there, see okay. what happens. We're going to see how quickly this fills up. And that's because- It's really quick. There's too much air space in between, so your water is gonna be coming down. Just going to the bottom. So therefore, when we end up, it filled up too full. Oh, sorry. Right. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> okay, so, so this right here tells us that we have a lot of air space. It's gonna, if it wasn't for the jar, it, it would just go down, yeah. Just go down. So if we put a layer of compost on a mulch on top, that would, number one, slow it down a bit, and then we'd have less evaporation from the soil. We'd actually have more evaporation still, but less because you have it covered. More evaporation if you didn't cover it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to something that's a little bit more realistic. Here we have some sand. Let's try it with some sand over here. Now this sand has larger particles and you could tell it goes much slower. Okay, that's good. But look how, and it how bubbles. It's it bubbles. It's and percolating. It looks like it's smoking. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah. Look at this. Look how it's just slowly percolating yeah, through. Yeah, that is really cool. So if you have a sandy soil or a sandy loam soil, you know that it's going to be working really quickly, kind of like our bigger example over there. Now, on the other hand, we're going to go to the other extreme. And the other extreme would be clay. Now, don't go flopping that in here that quick. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, these clay particles are super, super small. And because they're super, super small, see how she's done? Let's fill it up. Let's fill it up. Okay. Let's well, fill it up. It's going slower. Yeah, I see that. Okay. But you see how the difference is, how fast those other two moved? Right. And over here, it just took some time over here. She got a little sloppy at it, decided mm -hmm. to baptize me. So it's going very slow because those, those particles are super, super, super small. Right. So what we want is we want soils that are have a have a good balance to them now we could balance these soils off in a couple of different ways one way is about 
tweaking and and adding things to your actual planter beds. Hmm. You could put sand, you could put silt, you can put clay, you could put pieces like uh, like bark and things of that in, in the area, in, inside of it. That's gonna help it out. Oh, you see these little itty bitty white things? Right. That's called perlite. Hmm. And perlite under a microscope has a whole bunch of tiny little holes. And these little tiny little holes attract water. When the roots need it, They'll search it out and they'll, and they'll find the so water. So this is good. This is good. I was not sure which way to go with that. That good, was bad. Good. Okay. No, that's good. Okay, so there are a lot of different types of organic mulches. Okay. All types. You have to decide which one you like the best. Which one do you like the best? Ian, it all depends on the type of landscape and the kind of gardening that you're doing. What if it was just garden variety gardening? Like I'm. That's what we're going to do. Okay, we're about. We're I like that. Garden variety. You really don't know anything about this. I know nothing about gardening. <laughs> That's okay. Well, whether it's flowers or vegetables or planter beds or even in potted plants, you could take and you can use different types of mulches. You just have to be careful how deep you put it around the plants. Okay. So uh, typically we don't want to go much more than one to two inches uh, over all the soil surface, but we do have to be careful around the plants because the plant has a stem mm -hmm. and we don't want to build it up around the stem so we want to keep it kind of going pivoting down like this or going down I was trying to use a three syllable word and it didn't work but you want to have to have it come down like this because if you bring it up too high it could rot and it's mm -hmm. called it's called crown disease wow. and this crown disease isn't noble at all it just shows that you don't know <laughs> <laughs> you just don't know what you're doing. Okay, so here we have a planting mix and mulch. Now, we may kind of think that, well, it's kind of redundant because that's probably what we have right here. But for me to go out in my yard or in your yard and dig it up and bring some soil in here, doesn't make sense to me. Right. So what we want to do is we want to just take and we can just dump it there and then just sp spread it out about a, about a half inch to an inch. Okay. Now you could tell there's not much difference. Let's do like a little swath right here. Yeah. Like you could tell there's not much difference in the coloration of what we're doing here right. to here. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. And that right there will, will it's, it's tremendous how much moisture that's gonna hold. And that's gonna help you reduce how much water you're using. Exactly. Which is exactly the name of the game right now, right? It is, it is. And don't get me started there because I'm gonna get into a political mode and I don't wanna get into a big okay, fight with that. nobody. Okay, we won't do that. Okay, no right. fighting today. <laughs> Maybe so, tomorrow. Okay, I'm, I'm getting to that. Okay, look at this all of a sudden. Look at this, See, we still have, we that's still amazing. have, we still have water in there. Right. Look how slow it's percolating. Yeah. So that's why if we have clay soil, it's not good for our plants either. Yeah. Because we need them to be a little bit open, but we need to have it smaller, but we don't want it too small because the roots will get suffocated. It's actually kind of a fun thing. You have a root. This might be a good example here. Here, let's pretend that this is a root. Yeah, put your pretend cap on, would you? Oh, shoot. Okay. okay. It's imaginary. All right. So you have roots. And on the roots, you have root hairs. Mm -hmm. The root hairs protect the root. If a root hair dries out or gets too wet, it stops protecting the root and the root stops growing. Mm. It can take upwards of six weeks for that root hair, I mean for that root, to start growing, growing new root hairs. So the problem that we have is that people will They'll, 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 they'll stop watering and then they'll wonder, oh, I stopped watering, I gotta water. So they water too much. Right, and then that's me. And then yeah. all of a sudden it's... it's how I kill things. Yeah, exactly. And the industry thanks you for that, by the way. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Okay, let's use something else. This right here is cedar bark. Cedar bark is really cool because it, oh, it has such mm. a lovely stench to it. I love that. This is the same stuff that you would have in your... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had COVID, like OG COVID. I can't smell most things. I can't uh, smell this. It's. It, I could be smelling paper right now. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it's so weird. Do you really smell it? Yeah. You're not playing with me. No, no. no. I smell nothing. Oh, no, it's good it's stuff. Weird. That's okay. okay. Okay, so this is a little bit different. These, obviously, we have larger pieces. Okay. And But it has a different kind of look. So why don't you take this and put it over here and, and kind of go in that direction this time. Okay, like yeah. that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now look how bigger it is, how clumpier it, 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 clumpier it is. Right. If this stuff right here will eventually 
mat down. Okay. And it'll this will compost down, but it won't comp compost down as quickly as this or as tight as this. Eventually, it will get real tight. And the other thing is this: is that once you do do this whole process, once you get this whole process done. Uh, then you can just come back later and add more as you wanted. But look at the, the difference in the coloration. Right. And, uh, and this is really nice. And it does smell really good once you get it over there and you don't have the COVID nose. Right. You yeah. I, I think I'm always going to have it. So it's okay. You no, know, you'll be all right. You'll, you'll, you'll be okay. It's been two years. Uh, I don't think I'm getting no, it. No, it'll back. happen. You'll, you'll, okay. You'll, all right. <laughs> get it. We'll get you out in the garden. Oh, and then I'll just, yeah, I'll be like, wow, it smells great. Yes. Yes. Manure, yes. yes. Well, since it doesn't matter what's going, uh, what, right, what, matter. what's happening over here, this right here is much different stuff. This is, this is pretty phenomenal. This is, this is like the caviar. Mm. of mulches okay okay this is called leaf mold now it's a beneficial leaf it's a, you know it's not like you 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 have it and, and then it's going to spread and your plants are going to rot out or anything like that this beneficial meat leaf mold is t talking about the process of how it breaks down and creates these beneficial bacteria in there which is perfect for your soil because all these will have some sort of nutrient Right. Benefit to it. So go ahead. Let's okay, mulch this let's up. do it. So what she's doing over here is that she's doing the same exact thing. And you can tell that this is a much more, well, it's, you can tell this is very rustic. Right. This is less rustic, but it's still rustic. And that one is just calm. And, but, uh, <laughs> garden but it, variety, yeah, if you will. Garden variety. But it's, this is really cool because it's, this is not hard to find but it's not easy to find either so you can't buy and it? it no you can buy it oh you can buy it. hey you know what you can actually you can actually make your own leaf mold well this looks like something that's in my backyard right now well you know what we there's need to it's, rake. it's it's a cold process and that's why it's uh, a little bit more on the pricier side okay. and it's harder to get and it's more of a seasonal kind of thing if you were to take a bag just take a big old plastic bag mm -hmm. fill it with leaves just leaves no grass no sticks, no nothing, just leaves. Tie it up at the top, poke some holes on the bottom, take it and throw it out of the way in the back of the yard, someplace maybe that if you don't like your neighbor, let them look at it. Come back a year later. Hmm. That full bag will have composted down to about this much. Wow. That's gonna be your leaf mold. And okay, so no let water, me, no water okay. either. Okay, let me ask you a question. Keep it dry. Though. In my mind, because we know, we have now established I know nothing about gardening. Okay, when I... They can tell. I know. Okay. It's okay, though. <laughs> I'm going to learn. Okay, so like when I see people like, oh, I got my compost going on, you know, I see them on social media and they have this thing. Yeah. And they're like putting stuff from their kitchen in it and... Which that's one's a, that? That's a totally different compost. That's a different one. Yeah. Okay. That's a con they're making a compost. They're making more something like, more like of that. Something like that. Yeah, that's a totally different concept. That's a totally different thing. This is, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about today. Okay, I just didn't understand like the yeah. different, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, no, that, that makes sense. That's a wet process. Okay. Because you need the, you need the, the, the moisture. Right. You need the heat. You need it to get hot so that the bacteria can get in there and break it down. And it, if a person's doing it right, you can make compost within 21 days. That's, that's pretty very, cool, three yeah, weeks. Yeah, that's very possible. Better than a year. No, I'm just it, kidding, it's different well, stuff. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah, because it is different stuff. You're, right. absolutely, you're absolutely right. And a lot of people don't have patience for it, and they just don't understand the concept. Wait a minute, I don't add water? That's nuts. And I have a ton of leaves all the time in the fall, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, and that, yeah, that's exactly the time that you See, do See, I this. know a little. Like, you're I know awesome. the seasons. You do. Like, yeah. that's about it. Okay, so we're going to watch you on YouTube. We have specials going on all the time. Go to your, go to your, go to your stuff. Thank you very much for coming out Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It was such a fun time. Yeah. Ever wonder how you can apply a weed and feed and still get weeds popping up in your lawn? It's not that the weed and feed isn't working. You see, lawn maintenance companies can bring in weed seeds on their equipment from another yard. Birds drop seeds while in mid-flight, and Mother Nature has a way of blowing in weed seeds from miles away. When you see those random weeds, you can simply spot spray. But instead of mixing up gallons of weed killer, 
dedicate a handheld multi-purpose sprayer to get the job done. Pump, adjust the spray pattern, and spray. It's just that simple. Thanks for joining me on another excursion of Things Green. Our goal is to educate, inform, and entertain so you can become exposed to a green lifestyle inside and outside of the home and community, all on your terms. Join me next time right here as we help you with Things Green. John Delmatoff Backhoe Service has been serving Southern California for over 22 years and is a proud supporter of Things Green. Being out in the yard and garden has never been so much fun. With our many playful laser cut pet, garden, and yard signs. More information at instylesteel.com. For nearly 90 years, the Bonide family has provided solutions to lawn and garden pest problems. Whether it's an insecticide, weed killer, fungicide, or plant care product, Bonide products will provide you the best solution to your lawn, garden, or home pest problem. Southland Sod Farms, creators of genuine marathon sod. Pre-grown, tall fescue grass. More information at sod.com. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. And that's the way you keep your plants moist. Hi, I'm inviting you to come down to one of the free home shows where I give free garden talks. All you have to do is go to my website, thingsgreen.com, to see when the dates and the venues are at.